Today we're going to be combining this sound and this sound to get this sound. Welcome to another episode of Extreme Sampling, where we turn cool sounds from the internet into other cool sounds on the internet. Full disclosure, I did find these on Eliminate's Discord, so thank you, Nate, for having a community cool enough to share sounds like this. As usual, project files are on the Patreon, so if you want to throw me some support, that would be greatly appreciated. Let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to start by talking about what I think is kind of the cornerstone of this piece, and that is this sound right here. And the way I achieved this was through a few different effects, but the most important one is this Sepstral Morph by Alexander Panos. It's part of the color transfer bundle. I don't like to encourage mindless consumerism, especially in the audio production world. I think we've got plenty of that going on. However, I will mention plugins if I think they do something really unique or if I find myself using them pretty often. I think this ticks both of those boxes. It comes with three devices, very unique, very cool. Definitely recommend checking it out. But let me talk about how I used it in this instance. That's the sound of the shoe bill stork. When we put the sepsral morph on it, it normally starts out with the XY controller in the A corner. That means we're only going to get sound from input A, which is the track that we place the device on. We then have the option to set an input B. So I've chosen the electrical buzzing sound as input B. Took a single selection of it and looped it frontwards to backwards, so we got that continuous buzzing. That's set to input B, and then as we start to move this XY pad, we can kind of morph spectrally between those two sounds. I'm just gonna loop this one segment and then move the XY controller around so you can hear what's going on. So I think it sounds best over in this corner. So I'm gonna leave it there. And then I added a stab multiband transient shaper to make it punchier, some Valhalla room for atmosphere. Just very short, tight reverb to give it a bit of a sense of space. EQ8 to make it brighter, much brighter. A reverb tail machine, which has some reverb throws that you really don't hear until you crush it with OTT like that. And then it's also running through a bit of mid-side saturation using Roar. I have an audio effect rack here with two utilities, one to let through only the mids, one to let through only the sides, and then we saturate them separately. And that's what we get. So now that we've got that sound out of the way, I'm going to start from the beginning and talk about the rest of the sounds in this track. So let's start with the buzz plucks. The sound is pretty simple. It's just a small segment of the electrical buzzing sound loaded into a sampler. I just found a section that was nice and tonal, uh, very stable. Um, I looped it using the forward to backward sustain mode, so it just kind of plays back and forth. A bit of cross-fading to smooth it out. And then I put some pitch envelope on it, about eight semitones, very short decay, so it's almost undetectable. And then uh, for the filtering, filter is all the way down, but it opens up kind of a plucky envelope every time a MIDI note is triggered. And then the volume envelope has a similar kind of plucky shape However, it's a little bit more pronounced. Let's take all these effects off and hear how it sounds on its own. Just like that, just kind of like a plucky guitar type sound. It's then running through an echo on 3 16th notes, a Valhalla Room on these settings, and OTT at about 50%. That's what it sounds like. For this sound, I started with just one of the tails from that buzzing sound. I put a pretty intense EQ on it some reverb and some OTT and then a bit of utility for volume automation. And that's what it sounds like. Then for the bass, the bass sound took quite a bit of resampling to get to. Basically I had to take a section of the electrical buzzing, something like this, and then I had to use some intense EQing to get it down to just a sine wave something like that. And then when you freeze and flatten it and you zoom in, you basically get a sine wave like that. So I just did that. And then I loaded that into a sampler and I looped that single cycle waveform, made sure it was in tune, added a pretty long release on the volume envelope. So it just starts and then each note just kind of gradually decays. I also set the voices to one, so it remains monophonic. Later in the track, I add some uh, roar distortion to it, and I taper off quite a bit of the low frequencies. So it just becomes kind of like a buzzy, thin bass sound. Okay, now let's talk about some of these sounds in the drop. The sub main 
Again, that same sine wave, just with a slightly different envelope, so it's much shorter. And then I did that trick in Ableton where you can drag audio into a MIDI track and it'll ask you if you want to convert it to MIDI. So I did that. And then I just took away all these useless notes and then we were left with these that pretty much matched the cadence of the stork noises. I just had to make some slight adjustments to those. So that's how I got those subs to kind of mirror the cadence of the stork noises. And then I did the same with these plucks here. And those are just using a small segment of the electrical buzzing sound. So that's the original sound using the built-in filter envelopes and volume envelopes from the sampler device. And then if we start to add Erosion, OTT, Valhalla Room, Saturation, Reverb Tail Machine. You won't hear this until I believe like right here and then the EQ8 at the end to finish it off. And then, let's see what else is going on. Okay, the kick. The kick is that same sine wave from earlier uh, with some pretty intense pitch envelope. I took a long time to get these settings dialed in just right. Feel free to pause the video and take a closer look at them. Um, and then the effects, this one called Texture from Devious Machines. It's basically a noise source with an envelope follower. So anytime signal comes in and opens up that envelope follower, noise comes through. So the kick lets some noise in and then we use saturation to glue them together. So that's how that sounds. And then some slight compression. That's what we get. And then the snare drum. Snare drum is made up of two sounds. Uh, let me turn these effects off on the main track first. You can hear them independently. So this sound is just kind of like a beginning snap of one of those electrical buzzes. Just took that first bit there, ran it through a saturator and some EQ. This right here is that sine wave again with a really short volume envelope. So when you play those two together, just sounds like that. But then the real magic comes from adding all these effects afterwards. So here's some EQing some saturation. This is Valhalla Room Reverb, but I'm only uh, using the sides from that reverb and then saturating them, then mixing them in with the mono signal that sounds like this. So together, and then I added slap just to replace the very beginning of the transient and add some white noise underneath it to smooth it out. And that's what we get. This hi-hat sound is a similar one to the one that we used in the snare, uh, but I'm using a vocoder on it with white noise as the carrier, and then we can set the release to control the envelope of that hi-hat. So as the track builds, we have that hi-hat start to grow. And then some saturation and utility for volume automation. And then these kind of like percussion hat sounds right here. These are samples of the Shoebill Stork with some EQing to cut off a lot of the lows. Stab multiband transient shaper to get it tighter. And then some roar with a noise injection shaper on it. And then vocoder with white noise as the carrier to again have a little bit of control over that envelope shape and smooth things out. I just did a lot of little like glitchy edits, stuff like that. You get the idea. And then this sound. That was the kick. Let me see if I can recreate kind of how I did that because that's it's resampled so I can't show you the effects chain. So I just took the kick and ran it through the spectral time device. And I think I just did 100% mix and a slight tilt. Yeah, I just did that. And then I did some filtering, echo, Basically just that. Then I froze and flattened that and reversed it. We get that. Basically exactly how I did that. And then this one, buzz riser. That's literally just a sample of the electrical buzz sound. I didn't even do any processing on it. I literally just stuck it right in there. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then on the outro, I just kind of reused some of the same sounds from the intro. I didn't really put in a lot of thought into the intro and outro. A lot of the focus was on the drop this time. So yeah, let's go ahead and listen to the whole track. <laughs> 